Hello and welcome to Hold On With Fellowship Sunday School Lesson for September the 12th, 2021. The death of Nadab and Abihu. Coming out of Leviticus, the 10th chapter, 1st through the 7th verses. Um, last week it was a blessed time. It was a time of, of ordination. It was a time of giving the responsibility of the priesthood to uh, Aaron and his sons. They were um, not only blessed with this uh, calling from the Lord, but they were blessed with responsibility. They had to do the will of the Lord and, and be holy and what, what is acceptable to God. They had to be in his will. Um, unfortunately, in this life, it's going to be consequences for those that step outside of the will of the Lord. It's, uh, it's uh, something that we all have to come to grips with. When, um, if you are doing things that are not inside of the will of the Lord, you will have consequences. Um, if you, if you uh, continue in a sinful lifestyle, you need to come to grips with the fact that you're going to have consequences at the end of this life. If that's the life you choose to live in your entirety of life. This is a, a sombering fact for everyone to come to grips with. But it's something that is needed to be said. A lot of times people go about life thinking that they are good regardless. They're just going to live life and do as they please. And not realize that this life is going to be over at some point. And you're going to have to endure the judgment. And that judgment is not going to be pleasant for those that are not inside of the will of the Father. Our scripture lesson text comes out of Leviticus, the 10th chapter today, starting at the first verses. And we will read, And Nadab and Abihu, the son of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense therein, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mashal and Elizaphan, the son of Uziah, the cousin, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry on, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, and Moses had said, as Moses had said, and Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his son, Uncover not your heads, neither rent your clothes, lest ye die. And let wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, beware of the burning which the Lord hath kindled. And ye shall not go out the tabernacle, go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the words of Moses. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy Father, we thank you for this blessed day. We thank you for another opportunity this day to come into your word. Lord, we ask that you continue to grow in us the, the will to seek you and want to be more like you every day. Lord, I ask that you forgive anyone and all of us of our sins that we may have committed that is outside of your will. And if it's in your will um, to restore us back into a right relationship with you. Lord, I ask that you prick someone's heart today and that they might ask what they must do to be saved. And if it's in your will, I ask that you uh, guide them to a church home where they can be utilized as a vessel. If it's in your will, I ask that you bless us all, that we continue to grow in your word, continue to seek you, continue to um, seek to be more like you every day, Lord. And, and I ask that you continue to work in those that that need to be in your will, need to be in you, in your in your presence, and those that need your intervention in their lives to come back to you, Lord, if it's in your will. 
And all these things I ask in your son, Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Good lesson this morning. Death of Nadab and Abihu. The fire of the Lord, Leviticus 10, 1 to 3. Death of Aaron's sons, Leviticus 10, 1 to 2. As I stated earlier, the, the lesson that we did last week was the ordination of Aaron and his sons as the priests of Israel. They had um, established the Aaronic priesthood in the Mo, under the Mosaic, Mosaic Covenant. They were the ones chosen by the Lord. And, and God um, approved Aaron's uh, first sacrifice. And it was blessed. And that's a sacrifice unto the Lord that's blessed. When he approves it, and it's and it's done in the way that he wanted them to do it. This is uh how the thing how the sacrifices went. You had to do them according to the law. You cannot just make a sacrifice and it's not the way the Lord wanted it to be done. That is something the Lord does does not look kindly on. He gave specific instructions on how to sacrifice unto him. It was something that was not to be uh not to be uh, done away with or or to be circumvented around. You had to do it the way the Lord told him to, told you to do it, or it's going to be a massive uh, consequence. At the the ordination from the Lord and 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 Aaron and his sons becoming blessed and receiving the anointing oil of the Lord inside of them and a ceremonial on them and. Um, what happened next was tragic. Uh, two of uh, Aaron's four sons who had just been ordained, Nadab and Abihu, they took their own senses and put incense in them and offered strange or, and, or as uh, also known unauthorized fire unto the Lord. They burnt their own incense and, 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 and made a fire unto the Lord. Uh, uh, it does not say why they chose to do this, but their actions was, were not something God had commanded or mandated. This was not authorized. This was not something God told them to do. This was not a, a, a offering that the Lord would accept. The strange fire offered by Nadab and Abihu uh, did not come from the altar where the burnt offerings had been made. It was. It had no association, no association with atonement or sacrifice, which was therefore profane to God, making it unacceptable. It had nothing to do with uh, being atoned for anything or or a, a sacrifice, making a sacrifice unto the Lord. Um, when you sacrifice an animal or something, it is blessed. It makes a sweet savor unto the Lord. This was not a sweet savor. This was an unauthorized burning of strange fire. They tried to come into God in their own way. And in, in the result of this was that they were struck dead. They were struck down for their, for their uh, actions, for their disobedience. The Lord wants us to come in the way that He want that He wants us to come, and not in our own way, not in the way that uh, we choose to serve Him. A lot of people believe that they can serve God in any way. I can do, I can um, serve the Lord any way I want to. You know, I can serve Him, uh, uh, serve. I can serve the Lord while I'm at the at the uh, the 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 bar. I can serve Him. Amongst uh, in a in a way where everybody is in a sinful way, such as uh, where uh, they have uh, the the new uh, homosexual churches, and we can serve the Lord however we want to, and the Lord accepts this. No, that's strange. God had made a way. He made a, uh, made statutes for his church he loves his church and he has a and he has a way that you are supposed to serve and come to him and it's decent and in order that is his church and it's and it's also how he did uh, during the time when they were 
serving in the temple. And this is how the Lord uh, made made it start right here, where it was uh, important to know that if you do things outside of the Lord's will, it will be consequences. And they and and sometimes it may be sudden, and sometimes it may be uh, down the line. But this time it was a sudden consequence. Aaron silenced before the Lord. God spoke to Moses next, telling him to remind Aaron that he'll be glorified all, before all the people. Had uh, Nadab and Abihu not been punished, God's glory would have been diminished. Of all people, those chosen to come near him as priests must come in a holy manner that reflect his own holiness. They had responsibilities. They were selected as the holy priests of the Lord, not by man, but by God himself. They had responsibilities. And Aaron, as a priest, he has to recognize that they were outside of the will of the Lord. He cannot mourn and be... Uh, be mournful and grieving for his sons who has sinned uh, against the Lord. He is the priest of the Lord. He has to hold his peace in, in public. They were going to be glorified amongst the people as well as the priest, the holy priest of the Lord. But they lost their opportunity by going before the Lord and doing their own sacrifices, doing it in their own way. Aaron, he heard Moses' words and he did not uh, dispute or rebuff uh, uh, Moses or try to explain that um, these are his sons and, and I need to be able to mourn. No, he remained silent because he knows that Moses is saying the words of the Lord and this is right. God had accepted Aaron's sacrifice with a fire of glory, but he condemned Aaron's sons with a fire of judgment. They received the judgment of the Lord, and this is something that uh, th that is uh, is is uh, uh, present. This is a this is a right now judgment. This is a fresh situation where your own sons have been taken. We can only imagine how tough it was for Aaron to endure such pain and agony, knowing that you had lost sons because they had done something outside of the will of the Lord, and now they received the judgment. This is the same as those that lose children in the world right now that uh, know the Lord and that were raised in the church or that have been introduced to God and still choose to sin and let them, and, and they perish, and they don't have an opportunity to come back to the Lord, or they lose their opportunity. This is a somber thing. This is what people have to go through when you have disobedient children who do not do the will of the Lord and fall fall away just as those in the world, just as those that never knew God or do, never recognized God. They just lose their battle, and they go into their home with, of whom they serve. This is tragic. God, he had every right to judge those who sinned against him. His judgment is always righteous. This is a rightful judgment. We can never um, disagree with the Lord when someone is judged because of their sinful ways. You are outside of the will of the Lord. You deserve what you get. You cannot dispute it. He's, he, he's a righteous judge. He's not the judges that in the world that may be, be swayed by by influence of money. This is one that is, makes the judgment and it's true. It's righteous. It's just. Our service to the Lord, Leviticus 10, 4-5, calling to serve the Lord. God open, op, often calls us to do things that are unappealing or unappreciated or unnoticed. This is the call of the Lord. Some people are not going to get it. Some people um, are willing to do it. Some people um, believe that you know, this is too much. I can't uh, handle it. But some people follow the Lord and do his will without any um, disagreements or without any any uh, um, pushback. And this is how we should be as children of the Lord. He calls us to serve in any capacity. We need to be willing to serve. This is the case of Michelle and Elizaphan, the two men who were the sons of Moses and Aaron's uncle. 
they were cousins, first cousins of their of the two leaders of Israel, and he called on them to come bring the corpses out of the assembly of the people. Under the law, anyone that touched the corpse became unclean for seven days. So Aaron couldn't do it. Uh, no other priests could do it. They wanted those that were not inside of the priestly family to come remove the bodies. Now, this is uh, a tough thing to do. This is family you bringing out of here. They're burnt to a crisp. You got to bring the family members out of there. And they, um, they took this duty and they did what they had to do. They did not dispute it. They did not uh, say, could anyone else do it? They went on and did what they had to do for the Lord. Obedient servanthood in Leviticus 10 and 5. Our devotion to the Lord is proved by our faithful, obedient service to him. You prove who you believe by what you are willing to do. Are you willing to get up in the morning and go to church faithfully? Are you willing to be part of uh, the Bible study or be, or be willing to serve and, and do uh, a service unto the Lord, such as uh, be a usher or be a deacon or, or be a cook in the, in back in, in the kitchen? Or, or, or are you willing to sing in the choir, sing holy songs unto the Lord, even if you can't sing? Are you willing to do that? What are you willing to do to serve the Lord? If someone calls on you to help out in another capacity which you are not uh, uh, in and you feel, uh, are, you, are you willing to take part and do as the Lord wants you to do or do as you are instructed to do? Or are you pushing back because you say, that's not something I do? We need to be obedient servants to the Lord, whatever he has for us to do, whatever we do in his service is blessed. We need to see where the Lord is calling us to in his service. Sometimes uh, people that are new to coming in unto the Lord and coming to church and being inside of a church family feel that they are just uh, there to observe and get to get the word. But it's another part, being willing to serve too. You need to become active in your church. That's where you grow a bond with your church and grow a bond, continue bond with the Lord when you uh, become active in what the Lord is doing. You should want to go to church. It should not be a, something you do begrudgingly or something you, you are looking to run away from as soon as possible. You should want to help out. You should give your efforts to your church. Give your efforts to the Lord. It's not just to the church. It's to the Lord. You need to give your efforts to him. You give your efforts to the workhouse every day faithfully just to get the check and to to sustain yourself. But to the Lord, who is the reason that you have that job, you are not willing to sacrifice and give your time and efforts. We need to be willing to give ourselves to the Lord. He is willing to he was willing to give his life for us. So we should we should uh, at the least be willing to serve not willing to serve the Lord is selfish. That's how you can judge if you are a selfish person. When you can't even give your time and effort to the Lord who who gave his life for you and continues to provide for you. But you can't give no time and effort to him because you're too busy. But you're not busy enough not to go to work. Moses, when he called on Michelle and his fan to remove the bodies of Nadab and Abihu, they simply came forward and did what was expected of them. They did not dispute. They did not protest. They did. Uh, this was not something that was going to get them applause or get them a pat on the back. This was just work. This was something they were going to have to do. They put their glove on and they did what they had to do. They did not... Uh, come in disagreement and ask could somebody else take this cup from them. They went on and did what they had to do. Times of tragedy and situations that um, cause pain and that is uh, it's terrible. It causes for people to step up and serve. Somebody has to do it. This is, it's a tough job, but somebody has to do it. With the sudden deaths of the two Israel's first priests, 
the people were undoubtedly in shock. This is a shock and death. Both of those are two people that who we had just uh, saw ordained by the Lord and, and blessed to become the priests were, t were wheeled out, um, wheeled out, and they were corpses now. This is a shock to so the Elizaphan and Michelle. They had um, important duties to do, and it's not to be overstated, but they had to um, do something that is undesirable. So they deserve recognition for doing the will of the Lord and not seeking a way out of it. We have to be willing to serve the Lord in any capacity, tough or 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 easy, we need to be willing to do it. This is uh, our efforts unto the Lord. You get a, a star in heaven when you do right by the Lord and do his work. We need to add those up. We have so much stars in the world that we got that cause you to go to hell. You need to start erasing those as the Lord erased them from you and start adding those up that the Lord gives. Those of his uh, of your efforts and his work. Those of your doing good to others. When you could have just turned a blind eye, you help others and you are exemplifying the the uh, ways of Jesus. You need those. You need to start adding those up in this life. The call of the Lord, Leviticus 10, 6-7. As we have seen, God calls on those who follow him and and it's seldom easy at times, but and, and it could also be difficult. This is especially true for Aaron in this situation. Not allowed to publicly grieve for his own sons. He couldn't go around crying and, and mourning and, and looking uh, as if he's sad that these men of, that were called to be priests um, had died. These are his sons. We, it, it would be ex acceptable in this time that we live in now that uh, one would mourn for their sons who had lost their life. But it's not to mourn, it's not mourn publicly. You cannot mourn amongst the people, showing them that you feel like the the judgment of the Lord was out of place, that you feel like the Lord uh, did uh, wrong in, in, in allowing them to perish. No, you, have, you cannot, as a priest of God, you cannot... Uh, uh, dispute the Lord's judgment. They had sinned them against the Lord and they deserve punishment. If you grieve and, talk and and act like the Lord did wrong, that will show the people that you that that uh, you feel like the Lord is is not judging uh, judging them right. He is the righteous judge. If sin that comes against the Lord needs to be punished, it should not be uh, disputed or. Or, or you or you have doubts about it. No, it's it's right or wrong. Did you do right by the Lord or did you not? It's cut and dry just as with us in our life. It's going to be cut and dry whether we did right or wrong. It's going to be a, a cut and dry situation. And, and we'll know it. We'll know it if we did right by the Lord. And, and although it's... It's a tough thing when someone feels like they're doing right by the Lord all their life and then find out they're outside of his will. That's a tough situation. But you you have to seek the Lord and, and, and seek him in his word and, and be under good leadership and, be, and utilize your discernment to know if you're being led in the right way so you don't get led astray and be on the road, wrong track thinking that you are doing right by the Lord. The people of Israel, they needed to understand that God is uncompromisingly holy in his very nature. And that means uh, at, that in times of extreme difficulty and hardship, they had to persevere in faith and obedience regardless of the circumstance. No matter what happens, uh, we have to be obedient unto the Lord and continue and persevere in our faith. We're going to lose some people. We're going to lose people that that hurts us and that... Um, that that uh, may have been outside of the Lord's will, may just be a lost family member. And we have to keep on in the Lord, keep on striving. He kept us here for a reason. They might be gone, but he kept us here for a reason. God was not unsympathetic to Aaron, but Aaron had to demonstrate the importance 
of revering uh, the Lord, regardless of his own personal struggles and loss. Yeah, he got he lost his own sons, but he had to keep on in revering the Lord and, and showing that the Lord's judgment is true. Those who serve the Lord and spiritual leaders and teachers especially bear a great responsibility to him. They are entrusted with great responsibility, but given the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to empower them to live differently. They have to live differently. You cannot do um, what you wanted to do and go in there and, and get, make your own sacrifice to the Lord. You can't do that. You have to be in the will of the Lord, follow his, his, his statutes. The, the Old Testament and, and especially in the law, it, they gave specific instructions on sacrifices, on how to do it. You cannot go outside of that and do your own thing. Harsh penalties and punishment would happen. It was a risk for them. As pre holy priests, they knew uh, what the Lord expected of them. They did their own thing in disobedience. Sinning unto the Lord, and they received a quick and harsh judgment. Since Aaron and his surviving sons have been anointed with the oil of the Lord uh, and Israel's priests, they were not able to join the rest of the people in mourning. They had to keep on. See, when the people sin against the Lord and they perish, and they and and their life is over, uh, the world don't stop. You got to keep on moving and keep on pressing towards the mark and walking with the Lord. It's tough, but you got to keep on persevering. Uh, we, we lose people every day, but we have to keep on in our own walk. They just endured a terrible tragedy, but the work of the high priest and the priest, uh, his two living sons, Eleazar and Ethamar, could not be laid aside. They had to keep on and doing the work of the Lord. The, uh, the Lord's work is not going to stop because of the two rebellious priests. They sinned among, uh, against the Lord. They lost their lives. And the work has to continue on. This just shows how a sinful life causes continued uh, walking and, and not recognizing it as much as you would a, a saint of God who loses their life and should be honored in their in their uh, in their walk and what they did for the Lord, and we that's how it shows us we need to be in the will of the Lord and and be His children when we lose when when our life is over, so we can uh, be lifted up in our in our leaving here, and people would honor us and our name lives on forever because we did right by the Lord instead of just being a footnote. It must be noted also that the that the command that prevented Aaron from publicly mourning his sons and that commanded him to continue to serve as priest between God and the people was grueling from a human standpoint. This was tough. The anointing of the Lord was still on Aaron though. So God was still with him. The anointing had not left. God knew Aaron would not be able to continue on his own and the Lord never abandoned him. The Lord was there with him in his tough situation in his walk that was tough and and very grueling and in a situation that is not admirable the lord was there no matter what we're going through to the tough times where we feel like we can't make it we feeling faint where we're feeling that we are um stressed to no end we still have the lord to, le to lean on he's there with us but he wants us to be obedient I'm going to keep I'm going to keep hold you up in this walk but you just need to obey me and do my will and I'm going to hold you up I'm going to keep you going I'm going to make sure you persevere through this but you got to be obedient and don't turn away from me in your time of sorrow in your time of tough times where you feel like you can't make it don't turn from me stay with me cuz I'm going to stay with you God may call us to do a tough task, but he will uh, equip, equip us and empower us for whatever service he calls us to do. He'll never leave us alone. Even in the midst of the worst tragedies that we endure in life, he is not going to leave us. He's going to always be with us. But he uh, expects us to be diligent in our service and faithful to him at all times. No matter what we go through, 
we need to stay in the will of the Lord and do his will and, and be faithful, not fall away. He's looking at us. He wants to see in this adversity, are you going to stay with me? Or are you going to turn away from me and lose your faith? Amen. We're going through a tough time right now where many have fallen away. Many have used the excuse of the pandemic to lose their faith, lose their um, walk with the Lord, lose their drive to be in the church house, lose their um, their uh, their place in the work of the Lord. They have a job that they're supposed to be doing, but they've used the pandemic to sh stray away from their jobs. You need to come back because the Lord is going to expect a uh, to a explanation for for your falling away from Him. If you lose, if you if your life is over, you're gonna have to explain it because He's giving you a purpose in His work, and we it should be no excuse. Long as you're able to do what you what you're supposed to do, you need to do it. Amen. Will you be blessed and continue to grow in the Lord?